So we are gathered around this very festive luncheon table today with a panel of fermentation experts. How did you get interested in fermentation? After I moved to the Bay Area, I was learning a lot about food and I got into canning. And my one complaint with canning was that it's just not as nutritious. And I started investigating other ways to preserve food. And so I made my first little batch of sauerkraut about, about seven years ago. Most of the food I was making seemed bland. So when you put fermented foods on things, automatically they come to life. All my food was improving, so I started fermenting absolutely everything I could. My brother Sean introduced me to fermentation, fell 100 feet rock climbing. My brother nursed me back to health with his fermentations. Thought it was so good that we couldn't not sell it. That's how we kind of got into the fermentation business and how I really got into fermentation in general. It's sort of antithetical to the way a lot of us were raised you know, a few decades ago where everything was so sterile, right? Your food came packaged, and the idea of leaving something out on a counter for days at a time was horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> so once I began to understand the principles behind it more, the science behind it, it fascinated me. And so it just became this, this constant process of exploring and trying new things. So Nicole, I know that you teach classes on fermentation. Would you like to share a few tips with us? One of my best tips for people is long and slow. So you take your time. I hear a lot of people ask me, how do I make it go faster? I want it, I want it done now. And really, I think most people agree that the longer fermentation time, the slower, the cooler the temperature, mm -hmm. the, the better the flavor better. out of it. You definitely don't want to use your tap water at home. There's a lot of chlorine usually in tap water, and you can definitely taste it. So I would recommend any filtered water that takes out the chlorine. Focus on simple things first. Just a simple salt brine, brining any vegetable, works great. My first attempt at fermentation was trying to make a really great dill pickle, and bar none, cucumbers are among the hardest things to preserve. One of the tips that I had read about that really works is put a grape leaf in your cucumbers. Also the type of cucumber is really important. The Kirby's are best, and just make sure that they're the right size, and then you've got that grape leaf to keep them crisp. So Sean, I know you are very experimental with your ferments. Any interesting stories to share with us? I've had a lot of failures. <laughs> a lot of cool things have happened. I, when you make sriracha, especially the peppers have so much sugar and so much capsaicin that they tend to glow no matter what you do. And then the next morning you have this jet stream of oh. sriracha that hit the ceiling and now it's dripping down on everything. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, everyone. I've learned so much from all of you, and I've been royally entertained, too, with your stories. <laughs> thank you so much, and I just want to say cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. to fermentation. <laughs>